Hey guys, how are you doing? Sharon McLaughlin here. I wanted to talk about vulnerability. One of the things that I said I would do is starting this year was to read books. I had always been an avid reader, actually not when I was younger as a child, but as I was older, got away from it. And so I read this book, Daring Greatly by Brené Brown. So I figured I would cover it today. So when it comes to Daring Greatly, one of the things that she talks about is vulnerability. Now you could say, this is a weight loss group. What does this have to do with, you know, uh, mindset or anything? My program is mindset, it's nutrition, and it's self-care. So one of the things about being vulnerable is trying new things, um, to have enough courage, I guess you could say, or have enough uh, feeling that you feel worthy is really the bottom line. So when we set out to make ourselves healthier, that we're on a road to um, improve our health, that we'd like to lose weight, whatever it's going to be, decrease inflammation, just live healthier lives, we're, we may be vulnerable. You, per some people will perceive it that way. And the reason why I say that is because some people will say, let's eat that pizza tonight. You know, let's do this. Let's do that. Let's have those cookies in the house. Let's go out and get this type of food or fast food. Um, and so you're going to have to, um, there'll be different situations that'll be harder than others. So this is why I wanted to talk about being vulnerable and kind of just having enough confidence in yourself to speak up and, and know that your actions and your words, they're important. All right. So one of the things that she talks about as far as being a vulnerable is that, listen, we, we're human, right? So because we're human, we all want to feel connected. We all want to feel love. We don't, we want to feel like we belong. We don't want confrontation. And a lot of us are very, we're afraid of confrontation. It's not in human nature to confront people. We'd rather curl up in a ball, some of us, and not deal. So this is one of the things that I think is important as far as dealing. It's not even so much just with weight loss, nutrition, health. It has to do with our everyday life. Sometimes people say to me, you know, I'm upset with where I am now. If you're upset with where you are now, then you have to make some changes. So this is part of it, right? It's mindset. So let's work on some, you know, making changes today. And I'll basically summarize this book. So we all have insecurities, right? That could be something like, I'm not smart enough. I'm not lovable enough. I'm not successful enough. Some of us feel uncomfortable with how we look, you know, um, my skin is too wrinkled or I'm not slim enough or um, I, it's something internal as well, perhaps even like, you know, I don't have enough patience, whatever it is, uh, we all have those feelings of insecurity. So when it talks, when she talks about being vulnerable, that could look something like, you know, um, perhaps when we're in a room and, you know, we're asked a question or there's a question posed to the room. Some of us wouldn't speak up because we don't want to uh, share an unpopular opinion. Perhaps somebody will say something to us that's kind of condescending or not so nice, but we don't have a tendency to stand up for ourselves. Some of us are very, we live very stressful lives, right? We don't like asking for help. We're doing, we're used to doing everything ourselves. Some of us have a hard time saying no because we're just not used to asking for help. And so, um, we take on everything ourselves. We don't know how to say no. And what happens is that then we feel even more overwhelmed. Some of us aren't, are afraid to try new things. And that could be, we could bring it to diet. We could bring it to exercise. It could just be anything in our life, perhaps something that would make us more healthy or something that could actually even uh, help us to grow. Remember, there's a growth mindset and there's a mindset that's kind of just... I hate to say stuck, but there's two different mindsets. It's one gonna one feels one person feels, you know, nothing's going to change regardless of what I do, and then another person may feel I'm going through a difficult period at this very moment, this period in time, but it will get better. All right. So when Brene Brown feels that when we when we're not uh, being vulnerable. We're not leaving full lives. And that could very well be because, again, it has to do with not exposing ourselves, kind of um, putting ourselves into a shell, putting a wall around us, being fearful. And so we're not out to, we're less likely to take those opportunities. When it comes to opportunities, I believe that that's really important as far as growth goes. It's one of the things that I do is I read, but I do podcasts. I it could be something like reading a book, listening to a podcast, listen to a video or watching a video. But I try to work on self-development throughout the week. And this is something I speak about in my program. 
see some of us like i mentioned we feel like we're in a rut but it's really hard to make changes if we feel like there's no opportunities it's hard to see those opportunities if you have a mindset that you feel like you're stuck like kind of um it's a circle right so one of the things i suggest is working on self-development feeling worthy that you are enough and working from within it's really important with weight loss with nutrition with your life so taking vulnerable being vulnerable means opening up um not having as many fears being authentic what i mean by that is not trying to be somebody that you are because you want to make somebody else happy truly being your authentic self having self-compassion listen we're all going to make mistakes but it's important to have self-compassion being resilient i spoke about that on another video but it's important to be resilient um, we're less likely to try to numb and what I mean by numb is maybe over drinking, um, just avoidance. A lot of us don't like to deal with things, so we just avoid it. Could be avoiding a text, could be avoiding a telephone conversation, could be just avoiding conversations in general. So we avoid. And that's a problem because that really does hinder us. If we work on communication, um, working on better communicating so that we allow people to feel or understand how we're feeling without getting upset without getting impatient then that really is a, a better way to go right rather than you know kind of keeping everything pent up inside of us gratitude is extremely important and one of the things i talk about is a gratitude journal it could be something simple like a notebook just writing down three things each day that you're thankful for and just kind of shifting that mindset a little bit again we don't have to be positive all the time because that's not life we go through difficult periods, but it's a matter of, um, you know, realizing that this is only temporary and that it will get better. Some of us rely heavily on faith. Some of us rely on trust from others. And then we're disappointed when, you know, they kind of let other people let us down. So again, it has to do with working on ourselves first before anything else. I uh, work with the life coach school, um, and one of the things that she talks about is that we have manuals for people. We ourselves follow a certain manual and we portray that on other people. We think that other people should follow that manual, but that's not how it is. Everyone else is living their life, doing things their own way. And it may um, be different than how you expect them to act because they're not you, but it's unfair to put your manual on somebody else. So just something to keep in mind. Remember, it's really important to rest. I always encourage self-care, getting at least seven hours of sleep at night. And one of the things I spoke speak about is calmness. It's important to deep breathe. It's important to, uh, you know, to make time for yourself, to exercise. And again, exercise doesn't necessarily have to do with weight loss by any means. We should be doing it because it's a gift to our body to be able to exercise. Some people, unfortunately, because of physical ailments, they're not able to exercise at all. So being able to exercise truly is a gift. Making sure that what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis is meaningful to, to you. You have to have purpose. Otherwise, you may feel like you're just in a rut. You're doing things for other people all the time. And you yourself, you know, you may feel like your life isn't meaningful enough. So make sure that your voice is heard. Make sure that you feel like you're doing meaningful work. It'll make life that much easier to you, for you realizing that you're not always in control. We kind of just touched upon how um, your manual isn't going to fit everybody else's manual. And just, again, kind of being aware of the situation. In the book, Darren Greatly, she talks about scarcity. And this is a problem. See, a lot of us will compare ourselves to others. We, we concentrate on what we don't have. And that's where gratitude comes in, you know, concentrating on what we do have. And just kind of making those little um, mindset shifts Sometimes the first thing that we, we, when we wake up in the morning, what was your first thought this morning or tomorrow? What will be your first thought? Some of us will say, I didn't get enough sleep. So you're already um, waking up and the first thought is, I didn't get enough. I didn't, you know, I'm lacking on something, which is a problem, right? So one of the things I do is I definitely structure um, my time throughout the week, but I definitely get those seven, eight hours of sleep. I'm pretty routine. I go to sleep at 10, wake up at six, get my exercise in. And I really have like a set schedule and it makes life throughout the week that much easier. So she talks about shame as well. And shame could be something like, you know, not speaking up we spoke about because you're afraid of being ridiculed, having your fingers pointed at, um, 
We spoke a little about comparison and how that doesn't help at all, right? Because we're comparing about what, comparing ourselves to what other people are doing. Again, they're living their own life and that's okay. And then lastly, uh, we may feel disengaged. And when that happens, that's actually a problem because it's no more like you don't even care about fighting. You don't even want to have a discussion. You're just totally disengaged because the feeling is that person no longer cares. So we want to take note of that and we want to work with ourselves from within so that before we get to the period of feeling disengaged, we would have been um, aware of what's going on and to change it. So I see some people have joined. Again, the book is called Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. and basically just summarizing it. One of the things I had said to myself that I would work on self-care. And one of the ways I do that is by reading a lot, videos to podcasts, however, whatever fits into your schedule. So remember, if you're not completely vulnerable, you're not living your fullest life because you're going to be holding yourself back, right? Trust is another thing that becomes a problem. People are afraid to trust others. So she talks about marbles in a jar. So when you're around other people that are comforting, supporting you, um, you feel, you truly feel inside that, you know, they're trustworthy. They've done things to support you. What they say is how, what they're actually following through with their and how they're acting. So marbles go in their jar, right? Each person has a jar. And when they go against their word, when they're uh, really not responsive to how you're feeling, or you kind of feel like, again, they're disengaged, or they're just not understanding you, marbles come out of the jar. So she breaks it down into a simple system, but basically we want a, a support system. We want to surround ourselves with people that have lots of marbles in their jars, if you want to break it down that way. So other things that she talks about is, um, shame which we spoke about but she compares it to guilt as well as well so there's some differences and we'll go through that but thinking about shame itself just being aware of the situation and know that it's a you know we make mistakes it's a short period of time so as far as shame versus guilt think about it like this guilt is something like i did something bad made a mistake call me on it, you know, I'll acknowledge it and I'll change it. Shame is more like an internal, like I'm, I'm a bad person because I did that. Listen, we all make mistakes, but it's okay to feel guilt. It's not okay to feel shame. Shame has to do with um, just not having a lot, enough like self-worth, I guess you could break it down that way. So it's important again to work with ourselves from within first. If we don't work with ourselves with growth mindset, then it becomes a real problem. So remember, there's two different mindsets, right? There's the growth mindset, like this is temporary and things will get better. And then there's the fixed mindset, like I'm stuck here and I'm going to be stuck here forever. So again, I know I keep saying it, but self-development is so really, it's important. It's why I bring it up in my program because I believe that much. There's even a self-coaching model within my program. Um, so if you feel like you're stuck, coaching is a great thing for you. Reach out and, and get yourself a coach, okay? So when it comes to sh feeling shame, realize that there's usually triggers. It may have something to do that uh, with something that has happened in your past. So say, for instance, you are working with somebody right now and they did something and you feel like you overreact, like you say something, you did something, you feel like you overreacted. Chances are it probably was a trigger to something that has happened in the past. And it's probably something that you can think of right now because so-and-so did this five years ago, last year or whatever, uh, you, you know, you feel like this person that you're working with right now is bringing up those same feelings. They're triggering those feelings. Unfortunately for the person that you're working with right now, they don't get it because they haven't lived through your life. They don't understand it. And they're just like, what's going on here? You know, how do we go from point A to point B where, you know, there's a problem now in the relationship. So again, I would definitely work on communication. It's extremely important. Um, being open and being, you know, being able to communicate how you feel and giving people, you know, being patient with them and allowing them to kind of explain themselves. Sometimes you may ask, you know, why is this person doing this or that? Again, it's your manual for how they should act, but it doesn't mean that that's how they're going to act by any means. Everyone goes through different uh, periods of their life of difficulty. Everyone's walking in a, a, you know, their life, different, uh, different times, different footsteps, and we're really not aware of what they're going through. So 
make sure it's important. Reach out if there's any, like if something, if somebody is doing something that just doesn't make sense, reach out to them. Try to communicate. You know, um, this is how I'm perceiving it. Is this correct or not? And I know these are difficult conversations to have, but it leads to a lot less analyzing. It leads to a lot less difficulties. It leads to a lot less stress from within you. And I believe that getting rid of stress or decreasing stress is really important for us. It's extremely important because if you, one of those people, again, it goes to health and wellness because that's what this is about. It has emotional eating. Emotional eating could be going to the cabinets because you feel uncomfortable with what's going on around you. So again, it's important to confront what's going on and work with that. Um, what else can I say about this book? Perfectionism. She talks about perfectionism. That's a problem, right? Because nobody's ever perfect. You could look at somebody else and be like, oh, they have the perfect outfit. They're always clean. The house is clean. The car is clean, whatever. The kids are always perfect. Nobody lives a perfect life. You know, again, it's the grass is greener on the other side and just kind of realizing that. And then dealing with numbing, being careful not to overdrink, being careful not to just avoid things altogether because that doesn't get us anywhere. So some of us have a tendency to numb. It's your, excuse me. That's a problem because it's like more of a Band-Aid, right? You could overdrink, do drugs, whatever it's going to be, overeat, whatever your vice is. It doesn't take care of the problem. It's just temporizing it, um, basically becoming numb to it, but you haven't dealt with the pro problem at all. That's why she's a big um, you know, coach as far as dealing with the situation when it first comes about. It's kind of like a muscle, right? It's difficult to work with, but the more you do it, the better off you'll be at it. And it just gets stronger and stronger. And it's part of growth. It's having a growth mindset, just actually acknowledging it and working with it. All right. And then lastly, we spoke about disengaging, but her feelings, she feels like why people disengage is basically to protect yourself. If you become disengaged, you don't want to feel anymore. It's sort of like numbing, right? Um, and we kind of spoke about that before, like you don't want to enter a phone call, you don't want to deal. So that becomes a, a problem. And then the other reasons for why we can feel anxious is if we're doing things that don't really align with our values at all, right? It, it, um, and sometimes we're asked to do things like at work where we feel uncomfortable. It doesn't really align with our value. We don't really see the purpose of it. And so that could really be a hindrance or a block as well. So again, making sure that you're communicating effectively so that people know how what your feelings are and why you are hesitant to do um, like a certain task or whatnot. So you can see why it's important. So just in summary, as far as this book goes, vulnerability, right? How important it is to be vulnerable, to accept it, and you know, to realize that it's okay. Because if we don't accept vulnerability, what happens is that we hold ourselves back. Definitely having courage, and that realizing that there's always going to be critics. What she talks about is, um, she talks. I could probably read this out to you. It has to do with um, Roosevelt. He talked about the man in the arena, how the person, there'll always be the critics on the sidelines, you know, judging, always saying things. But really, the courage goes to the person in the arena. It doesn't matter if they fail, they succeed. What matters is that they at least try. They put themselves into the arena. They at least tried and tried to make it better, right? They tried to grow. And I'm a strong believer that even if you fail, you will always learn something from it. So, and you'll be able to build on that. And there's stepping stones here. And then lastly, your ego. Your ego really gets in the way sometimes, right? Because it has to do with, oh, you know, um, I'm perceiving that this person feels this way about me or I feel this way, I feel judged. If you have, um, this more has to do with business coaching, more so than health and wellness. But if you feel like you have a message to share with somebody, then it's important. Don't put it on yourself. Um, bring it, what I try to do when I'm doing business coaching is I flip it around and I say, you have a message to share, you have value to share. And that's so important. And that when you're giving value to others, that's all that matters, right? Like even doing this live, I personally hate these lives. I think I've mentioned this to you before, but I do it because I know it's important. I know that I'm going to be helping other people. And then I get messages, you know, this has helped me. So I keep on going with it. And the same thing with you guys. Everyone has a message to share. So if it's important to turn it around and uh, provide value and make it about other people. 
And what I can say is like when it comes to health and wellness, it's extremely important to do for yourself. But if you have young children, it's extremely important to, the, to them as well, because again, they're modeling your behavior. And that's important. You want them to have, you know, um, we know that sugar, refined greens, not exercising, being sitting down for too long, it's all not good for us, right? And if they see us doing that, they're more likely to have chronic health problems as they get older. If we're not able to confront our problems, again, children are more likely to not confront their problems as they get older as well. So again, children model your behavior. So do it for yourself, but also do it for the people that are, you know, that you're surrounding yourself with, the ones that model after you. All right, guys, if you have any questions, reach out to me. Again, my name is Sharon McLaughlin. We're trying to build this group. So if you know anyone that would um, benefit from it, certainly ask them to come into the group. You could learn more about my program at Sharon Mac Wellness. And I have a YouTube channel as well where all these videos would be posted. All right, guys, take care and have a great day. I will go ahead and end this broadcast. And I have to understand.